I wanted to start off by talking about your your current gig and what was the most challenging aspect of immersing yourself in the Toto catalog? Well, it, uh, it you know, I mean, it's still we're right right now. I'm uh, we're um, starting rehearsals Sunday, so um, uh, actually the short answer is uh, learning the songs. Hmm. Um, that has been challenging. Um, and I don't know if it's because, it, you know, Toto's music is not, it's not the blues, you know, they got a lot of core, you know, I mean, it really isn't. It's, uh, it couldn't really be much different than Huey. Um, so it's just, you know, it's a completely different thing. And it's just a matter of, yeah, learning the songs, remembering the songs. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I mean, it's a, it, it's a, the atmosphere, you know, it's just a whole different thing, but you're sort of expected with Toto, you're expected to uh, have your stuff together. No mess, no messing around at, at a Toto rehearsal. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, um, and that's thanks to our, our leader, Lukather. Yeah. Um, you know, he's a, uh, he runs a tight ship. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I've known, I've, you know, of course I've known the guy all my life and uh, he's always been that way. You know, he, he'll, if, if I like make a little mistake or something, he'll turn around. He'll, he'll, uh, he'll have heard it. No. Yeah. He'll let me know that he knows. Oh, okay. <laughs> So uh, it just, I mean, that part's been challenged. So I've been, you know, it's, um, it, I was thinking last night, this is the, the best comparison I, I can, this whole thing is for me, it's sort of like going to a new school. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting a new school that, you know, next week. We've actually, I've done two gigs with these guys. One was that. Um, um, with a little help you know, from my friends. Yeah, yeah, it was a video. Right. A live um, streaming thing. And then we did a uh, corporate show last, uh, just this past November, I think it was. Okay. So I've only done really two shows. And then now we're, uh, uh, we just got, uh, we just found out. I don't know if, uh, if, you, if AEG announced it or not, but we're doing 40 shows with, uh, with Journey. Yes, it's, uh, that was I saw that on the band's uh, Facebook page. So yeah, that has been made public. So yeah, that's that's great. Plus all the headlining shows uh, that it's, you guys are doing. Yeah, but it's uh, it's a little uh, a bit of both, but a lot of journey now. Unfortunately, I guess it's uh, what happened is Billy Idol had to pull out. I think he's uh, due to sickness or something. Mm -hmm. So open the door for. Uh, many more uh, shows with Journey. And, you know, I think it should uh, be a really good pairing, I would think. If I'm a Journey fan, mm -hmm. I'd like a Toto appetizer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. No, I think they, the two bands mesh well, you know, sonically, so. sonically yeah. speaking. Um, but, um, so... Um, as we speak, like today, I mean, every day right now, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm doing, getting ready for school, doing mm. my homework, going over the shit. I mean, we, I have all these tapes to listen to. There's new songs now that I added to the set, you know, because we have a long set, the headline set, right. but then the, the shorter one opening for Journey. So um, the good news is we do have almost two weeks of rehearsals. Oh, okay. Or a good. 10 days at least yeah and, uh, I, I would hope that i'm ready at the end of that uh attend rehearsals now i mean do they give you charts or uh do they just tell you hey no, char no charts um it's just like the the toughest thing is is the you know the end the beginning is the endings that are different than the record so right. i'll in some in some cases i'll study um a live show you know uh one of their they've got i think four thousand live cds they put out <laughs> I mean, so 
I got to find, you know, I have to find the specific version we're using. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no charts. No okay. Charts. I, I, you know, I can, I write my own little notes, but I don't want to get to the problem with that is I, I can get very attached to, you know, you know, it's, it's a mistake for me to do that. <laughs> um, now it's just the, the, the good old, uh, listen to it, learn it. Yeah. And know it. Mm -hmm. And along those lines, you know, uh, as we've talked about in the past, you know, there is that special connection between the bass player and the drummer. And so, and, and I know you've only had a couple of shows, but uh, um, what is it like, you know, to, uh, um, or what's the key to meshing with a new drummer? Um, the key to meshing with a new drummer, that's a very good question. Um, you know, I've done it so many times because... You know, in this, you know, of course, you know, all those years in the studio, every day is a different drummer. Right. Um, I think that when you, I don't think, I mean, at this level, when guys are as good as Sput is, for instance, um, Meshing's not, it, he's just so good. It just, it, it happens pretty fast mm -hmm. in the sense that this guy's a sk extremely skilled musician. So, um, the the key is 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 listening, listening to where um, the drummer you know where, where, what does he feel like. My job is really to, um, you know, I mean, do what it, what it takes to to get on his uh, clock. clock. Yeah, yeah. And uh, which but it was a piece of cake. I mean, he's just he's so he's a he's a really an amazing drummer. Mm -hmm. um, It'll be no problem, you know, as long as he doesn't mind playing with me. All right. <laughs> you know, yeah, um, but so far, so good. Yeah. You know, we've gelled, I think. I mean, I think it sounds great. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, with the type of music, these guys that, that I'm surrounded by, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm certainly in good hands. Let's put mm -hmm. it that way. And um, these guys make everyone else sound better so um it really does it it takes care of itself yeah i, should, I would say and it, it's it's fun it's different i mean every with every band of course there's always going to be you know an adjustment and like and we're still at, it's such the infancy of this thing for me you know we're just right. starting out um but let's see, you know, ask me in two months. Okay. In the middle of this thing. Was, and I'm sure it'll, it, it's only going to get better. Yeah. But, I mean, it also makes me think, because um, one of the interviews I did with Huey, he talked about, you know, he kind of uh, really liked it when uh, you joined the band or, uh, um, say, Steph started doing the guitar duties, he says, because it... It's it's the, we're playing the same songs, but it brings a new feel and appreciation for these songs, and and it made it all the more interesting for him. He felt, you know, it's like it it uh, it's like kind of a recharge in a way, or just oh, I never looked at the song and yeah, you way. get like a different take on it, you know, I mean, a, 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 it, and. You know, it's a, if you've been with the same guys for years and years, just, you know, sometimes it's good to just, you know, mess it up a little bit or right. just change things. And then, um, you know, you'll get uh, a different perspective, a different take on the songs. And Huey's, you know, he's always been really, uh, what would be the word? Well, he, he's open to, he's a very, you know, accommodating cat. So, what could, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, and, that, he was a, he's, he's easy. <laughs> I don't think he'd even look at me during, at a, I'm not sure. Yeah, I wouldn't get the same uh, look from Huey as I would uh, from Steve Lukather. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the, this is going to go a little bit on the deep side, but I'm just curious because. Sure 
the bass is such an <sighs> a dumb guy instrument. Yeah, it's an under the radar instrument in that you know the guitar you know just slices through everything. The drums just pound and stuff, and you know you, you talk to professional musicians and they're they speak very passionately about the need for a really good bass line in a song but it doesn't stand out like the others do and so i'm just wondering if you can express how does the bass this under the radar instrument influence a song or a performance well i, I think I, I forget who said it the other day um you know bass is one of those instruments where no one's really aware of it but if you remove it people will go what what happened yeah what, what, you know something just changed uh, what the hell you know something some somebody left the room or something <laughs> you know i mean or the bottom fell out of it. it that's actually literally what would happen um so i i don't think people are aware you know people get, aren't zoned in on a bass part when they listen to the radio but they f they feel it yeah it's something that get, it's more felt than you know whereas a like you say a lead guitar player goes out there does a solo it's you know it's front and center right it's right. just so much more subtle and in the background generally you know we don't we kind of stay in our little place mm -hmm. um and it, you know i mean and bass players Generally, they say the, the, the common bass player is more of a team player, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why I think uh, a lot of bass players become producers and because they're really always listening to everybody, you know, they have to. Yeah. And um, it's not like a, since it's not a solo instrument, at least in, the type of work I do. Yeah. But I'm accompanying, you know, mm -hmm. an accompanist. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. And, um, but it's, um, yeah, it's a, that's the best description is that it's something that you don't really, you won't know until it's gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you'll definitely notice it. And then, of course, there are, you know, some songs, there's, you know, some songs have certainly more compelling or memorable bass parts than others. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Beatles are a great example. I mean, so many memorable parts and such a big part of those songs. Yeah. There's uh, other bands, you know, the bass is more functional, foundational, uh, supportive. Yeah. Um, but to me, it's it's one of those elements that makes a song like three dimensional, in the sense that, you know, because for a while, I, um, I didn't have much of a, a stereo, but that's because life was normal and I was going to concerts and everything. Then COVID shuts everything down, and I'm tired of streamed, you know, two dimensional or even one dimensional sounds. So I started building up my stereo again. And that's when I really heard, you know, specifically your parts, bass parts again. And, and you know, again, it's it's what seemed to me to make the music more three-dimensional. It's not changing the overall, you know, the, the essence, but it's broadening. Well, what's interesting is that, you know, I mean, uh, people, the way people listen to me, it's like we have, the, you know, with this technology we have, it's crazy because like sound the sound has actually gone down the tubes. People are listening on their friggin' phones, yeah. right? You can't hear a bass on the phone. No. So it's like, don't play me that, so don't, I don't want <laughs> to listen to it on that phone. I'm not going to hear it. Yeah. Because you could get, like you say, I mean, it, it's, that's, that's like flat as a pancake. I mean, it's just, you're good. You're just getting these upper frequencies. All you're going to hear is the vocals, guitar, and a hi-hat and snare, or, you know, whatever. Right. No kick drum, no bass. You're missing out, like you say. I mean, you really are losing. It's, it's, if you're going from the sound of computer speakers, phone speakers, to even a halfway decent stereo, it, 
it should be, you know, I mean, I mean, enlightening. Yeah. What what you're missing. Mm -hmm. So good for you. <laughs> getting a new, getting your stereo together makes music. I mean, it makes it more enjoyable to listen to music, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think if it's you know done right, it should be like a concert in that you feel surrounded by it. You know, you're just swimming in it. You know. Yeah. No. And if you really want to get it going, I mean, I mean, great pair of headphones. Yes. That's just you know, there's that's literally you know i mean that's that's a good way to go it's not it's the i mean you don't get to share in the experience right but i mean it's a solo deal with you got headphones and but um it's a great way like as i'm learning these if i really want to listen carefully to like some something i'm learning i'll put on the headphones yeah because then i can get really inside the mm -hmm. track right right um and then switching gears slightly you know you're you're such a low-key guy but you've constantly been working constantly been been uh you know in the studio on the road etc and there's so much out there that tells you oh if you want to you know have a career you've got to be big you've got to be this massive self-promoter and all this kind of stuff and uh you know so for 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 those of us introverted geeks out there who who find comfort in the fact that a guy has been successful not being bombastic and over the top you don't even need hair no <laughs> yeah which is why i've been getting rid of mine over <laughs> over time yeah i uh i think that'll help well, me well, um, normal. I wish I hadn't lost my hair when I was 18. <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably didn't get carded, though. Uh, that, that, yeah, yeah, that's true, too. Well, so I was curious, what advice do you have for other musicians who are low-key, who don't want to be uh, uh, in-your-face promoters, uh, but also want to stay busy and stay in demand? Well, I don't. I mean, it depends on your instrument, I think. Um, I don't, maybe not even so much. I, mean, I knew that would happen. <laughs> but, uh, Quinn. Um, uh, let, let's see, what would be my advice? Uh, you know, there's, you don't have, I mean, it's just, a, it's like be yourself. And you're the, if you have enough passion about the music, if you're, you know, if you're, if that's what you love to do, I mean, I think that that'll take you much further than any kind of, uh, you know, you don't, you don't need to be loud. You don't need to just um, do your talking with your playing, mm. I think would be my advice. I mean, speak or speak softly and carry a, a large bass. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, let's let your fingers do the, the talking. Right, right. Okay. All right. That's a good, that would be my approach. I mean, also, I mean, bass players, but, you know, sort of by nature, I think so many of us are, you'd find similarities. Um, if you talk to Leland Sklar or somebody like that, um, you know, these uh, mellow people, but, you know, he's, um, Leland would be a great guy to interview, by the way. Yeah, no, I'd I'd love to. Uh, but yeah, I don't. I, I think if you just if just being yourself, is it's always a uh, that's the good solution. I mean, a good that's good advice for, for nearly anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I don't uh, I don't follow this often enough. But yeah, my favorite quote has always been from uh, Oscar Wilde, who said. Uh, be yourself everyone else is already taken you know it's perfect it's really true yeah i mean and um uh, your work you know your your work and, and and i mean it's important to have the you know the social communication skills and whatnot i mean you want you have to get along with people mm -hmm. um but bass players like i said earlier i mean they tend to be team players and 
really focused on the um, the entirety of the you know the t the total project, the whole thing. I mean, mm -hmm. and not so much my next solo. I yeah. can't wait for my next. You know, right, right. The lead guitar player syndrome. Right. <laughs> lead, lead singer. And you've also worked with. Uh, a very diverse collection of artists. Yeah, it has been diverse, true. You know, I mean, everyone from from Mick Jagger to Celine Dion to Jewel to, you know, and, and you know, which I don't know that you would necessarily see with, with uh, other people and other instruments. What's, you know, what's what's your key to being so adaptable to different styles? Um, repetition, training, uh, listening, um, and, you know, it, and just actually doing it. I mean, sometimes like you, you'll just go into the, like, uh, you go into the studio and you almost have no choice, but to just somehow you find a way, mm -hmm. even, if it, even if it's not something that you feel necessarily that comfortable with maybe it's a style of music or something that's not your bag or but but to you know always have the, an open mind hmm. about things and and never and never think of yourself as um, um you know don't categorize yourself like or I, i'm a, a a rock bass player or i'm a yeah. jazz bass player at least for me, I mean, I've I've always been. If you, I mean, if you're interested in doing studio work or you know playing on a variety of stuff, you you really need to have all these you know tools, and you only do it, you only get them from doing it mm -hmm. and learning it. Um, you know, I mean, going to music school didn't hurt. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, even if it wasn't full four years of school, it was enough to immerse myself in the base. And uh, I think, uh, you know, that certainly helps a yeah. lot. So, okay. Was, was there, is there one that stands out in your mind where well, you I went? went to, I went to Berkeley in Boston uh, and uh, it's still a great school. It's just only getting bigger all the time. Yeah. Um, but was but, there a, was there a gig or a session that stands out in your mind where you think, you know, I'm not sure if I'm a fit for this, but I'm going to go. And it no, ended up like, this is great. What, what I remember, the, the, what I, you know, the, 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 when I went to Berkeley, the, how do I explain it? Like in the actual dormitory where we all like, you know, where the first, especially first year students lived, at the bottom of the, uh, in the, like under the lobby, the basement of the building were what they called ensemble rooms. Mm -hmm. And you had like, say like 10 rooms and each one is full. And there's like a jam session going on in each room. Mm -hmm. And it, like, like it looked like so many things in life, it was very clicky. You know, there was the, like the good guy jams and then, the, <laughs> you know, the not so talented ones, and then the the competition at, at, at Berkeley, like the, I think there were at the time maybe two hundred bass players or something like that, mm -hmm. six hundred. So it was it was very competitive, and there's only and you want to get in uh, like there's only two or three cool jams, you know, with the and and. It was that competition made it, uh, it was scary, but man, did it pay off for me. Cause it really, when I started working in LA, it was almost like, well, there's only seven bass, you know, you know seven or eight bass players that, that you know. Yeah. That I knew. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's okay. It's not the first time. Yeah, I bet. Hey, Quinn. Knock it off, pal. Um, yeah, so just the, the, the competition was what really was part of the education. Okay. And uh, it's never been, I, it was, that was as tough as it's ever been for me. Yeah. 
And I had some teachers and, and some experiences that scared the hell out of me. Like I remember um, I got in the uh, big band, which is a, was a big deal at Berkeley. So, you know, you, and I've never played, first of all, I'm not, not really a jazz musician. I'm just learning it. Mm-hmm. So I get sort of thrust into this deal. And at the end of the first day, the, the, you know, the leader, the conductor comes to me and goes, uh, John, your time is out to lunch. No. And I went, Ooh, really? Uh, and then I forget what he, what he precisely what he uh, suggested, but he gave me, he said, listen to blah, 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 this and that. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have it together, you can't be in this band. Mm-hmm. So it was like, I was horrified. I was like devastated. And I just listened. And then the next time I showed up, I had miraculously better time. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, like little things like that, moments where, you know, the wake up call, you know. Yeah, yeah. You got a ways to go, pal. You got stuff to learn. Those things really helped me. Mm-hmm. Those little butt kicks, right? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, last time we talked, you, you, you mentioned how you, at the time, you were trying to write a song pretty much every day. And I'm wondering, are you still keeping up with that, first off? Um, Not as much, only because I'm learning these new songs, but I still will always, yeah, throw some time. There's an hour of of every day where I do something that's just for me, just me writing my own silly little songs. Mm -hmm. And what's what's usually the jumping off point for an idea? Is it a, a bass line? Is it a, a lyric? Is it? For me, it's usually, um, it's either a bass part, a bass line, or a beat. Mm-hmm. Or um, rarely do, do I sort of get a, a melodic thing going first. It's generally, a, you know, being a rhythm section guy, it's a groove. Mm-hmm. So it's a groove, it's a vibe, you know, oh, this sort of sounds like uh, whatever. And yeah, then you just sort of take it where it wants to go. But I, I start from, yeah, from the groove, I would say, from a feel mm. as opposed to a melody. And I'm wondering, as, as all of that songwriting work uh, influenced your bass playing in any way? That's a really good question. Um, I, would, I would say no. Okay. Probably not. It's probably sort of a separate entity almost. Uh, you know, I mean, my my compositional uh, work, and then my I still I I almost look at it still as more of like a hobby almost. <laughs> yeah. Or with bass, that's how I make a living. But on the side, I like to I have this little music hobby. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I mean, to, and occasionally I've gotten lucky with the hobby. And, uh, but I'll never know. I mean, has it, in, it I think that it's, uh, you know, you, you say, has it influenced? I think they're all also very connected. Mm-hmm. You know, the way I play bass, the way I write music, um, there's, there must be similarities to it. Yeah, yeah. In some, in some, it would be very hard for me to describe what they are, but because it's such an inanimate thing, you know. Right, right. Yeah, and you know, if it if it didn't, it didn't. But sometimes, I don't know. Just that's a good question. Though. Throwing your mind into a different area, it's like, oh, well, this this kind of changes how I think about this. It does. It does. I mean, it's. Uh, What's actually really interesting is was when I write a song, um, you know, my approach to the bass. Mm-hmm. I don't really spend too much time with it, oddly enough. It's like, oh, you're yeah, the bass. I'll just throw that. I mean, I'll, you know. <laughs> because for me, it's true. That's the easy part. Right, right, right. Um, and do you try it and uh, come up with, with parts for like every instrument? I do well. I do, and uh, and that's a good. The other thing is like, um, over the years, I tend to most of what I write probably is done on the piano, 
But um, I don't know, a few years back, I, 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 started, I started studying drums. I think, did I tell you that? No, no. Previously, yeah, I started, I don't know, year, about five years ago. Okay. Started taking drum lessons, uh, like bebop, like real jazz. And um, that's had an influence more on my bass playing than yeah. anything. Um, but that too, so, I mean, I've started songs, you know, from drums. And then if I, um, I'm not a very good guitar player. Mm -hmm. And I use that to sort of like, if I want to write, like I, if I want to dumb something down or start do or write something, maybe that's might be more accessible, I will write on guitar because my limitations are sort of, uh, they sort of help me in a way. Um, mm. it's, hard, it's hard to, to but my, I think my, in the future, where I would hope that some of, some of the stuff I've been writing recently has come from the guitar. And that opens up a whole other kind of style for me, certainly more of a rock thing, you know? Right. But, um, the, um, yeah, I use my inability to sort of like, because with the bass, sometimes maybe I can get a little too muso. Mm -hmm. that, you know what I mean? It's like, right, oh, right. Like, this isn't really, it's, it's, people might not get it. You know, it might be too, like, too adult or too whatever. Now, then give me a guitar and I sound younger. Right, mm -hmm. like, like like a six year old. <laughs> uh, no, so I mean, yeah, I, I I definitely use different instruments to write different uh, styles of music. Okay, and then uh, you know, uh, um, recently, you know, uh, you wrote uh, while we're young, which w it was on Huey Lewis and the News's Weather. And Huey talked about how much he loved that Johnny Cola talked about how much he loved what you, you know, just this, it was a, a different vibe that, you know, came as a result of that. And did you, you know, like, did you write also like horn parts for that song or did you I just, did. okay. I did actually. Wow. But, but um, Johnny certainly um, fixed what was not <laughs> legit shall we say i mean yeah i mean the the horn parts the horn the, the the horn thing was definitely part of what you created the whole thing i mean yeah when I started writing it i think the horns came on really pretty early on yeah because they're, like they're fairly prominent and, in that tune oh yeah 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 i mean it's like it's, i think it's uh yeah i mean it's a it's a definitely um Part of you know the uh, what's the word? It's a very common word, and I'm I'm not thinking of it. Hook. It's a yeah. hook. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah. It's a, I think it's an important hook part of the song, and 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 yeah. Again, Johnny did uh, fix what ailed, what was wrong about it. I'm not a horn player, and you you know we just play these things on a keyboard, right? And then you don't always realized that no 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 a horn player can't do that or whatever yeah, right yeah okay. i get that you know people use synthesized bass sometimes right on a yeah. demo that they right. want me to play on and we'll, we'll say play this part if you can't i mean or, it's like no it's a, it's physically impossible to do that on a bass guitar. <laughs> so you know, live and learn yeah yeah Although I wonder, I mean, in those instances, if it's physically impossible, maybe it it may not sound as great as the writer thinks it sounds, you know? Yeah, oh, you mean it's like maybe it's not so important a part? Yeah. Yeah, or I don't know. When I hear that, I think really busy over playing kind of thing. Well, you know? I mean, there's, there's been plenty of instances where someone's presented me with a part like that and... You, you know, you can't just go, that's shit, I'm not, <laughs> not going to play it. Yeah. 
you're not going to, yeah, you got to, you know, what's, you know, you got to, you got to give it an attempt and at least show people why, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And in a perfect world, you have an, an alternative. Like, yeah. hey, what about, I got an idea, you try this. And then if, and hopefully the reaction is, oh, yeah, 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 I like that. That's better. That's better like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's not always the case sometimes you get no uh, i like what i did go back to what's exactly on the demo yeah and then that's just it you know okay also uh, i figure I don't know, it, gun. yeah it seems like it would be kind of like writing you know oftentimes first drafts have way too much thrown in and then the editing process you're like all right take this out and you know, tighten everything up. And then it's like, oh, okay, that's much better. Editing, editing turns out that's, it's everything, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Whether it's, I mean, I mean, I, 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 I've never been for, for some reason, I think during this uh, pandemic, we've all watched a few movies uh, or TV shows, whatever it be. But for some reason, all of a sudden, I'm so aware of, the camera, for instance, you know, I mean, mm. like what, um, you know, how it's, how did I get here? I had, I know I had a really specific point. What were was, we saying? Was it a, a specific movie or something? We were talking about editing and, uh, yeah, oh, exactly, editing. How, and then, yeah, not only, okay, so I, 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 I noticed cameras and, and shots much more but but more than anything the editing aspect mm -hmm. is you know the stuff like that like how people don't hear you know like i, I was telling you like you don't know the base till it leaves yeah but the same thing the same thing is true i mean like we watch films and and so much goes by that you don't because they're doing such a good job presenting the film they don't want you to be thinking of edits for Christ's sake, right? Right, right. Yeah. But when it's done well, it's it's just so effective and such an important part of of uh, filmmaking, uh, telling a story, anything, and same same in music. Editing is, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's about the stuff you get rid of, mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. and and. Um, one thing I don't like is clutter, especially in music. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, you know, there's plenty of it out there. I like to hear separation between instruments. I don't like a lot of um, ambience and reverb. And I like stuff like right in your face that you can hear really clearly. Mm -hmm. And you can hear spaces. Uh, you know, it's not just a com big compressed wad of sound, which is what you get on the radio most of the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, or I remember a friend of mine went to one of these uh, multiple act shows uh, where it, it was, and it was emphasis on guitar. These these all these bands had. Uh, really big guitarists and stuff like that. And he talked about, it. he said, yeah, I, I left, you know, somewhere after, in the midst of the second act. And I'm like, why? And he said, you know, he said, well, by then I'd heard every single note you could possibly play. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. And he's like, I, uh, and, and they were not, they were not letting up, you know, they were trying to go for more somehow, you know? Yeah. And, and that's, I think that's the, uh, the, the more I've studied the drums, the, the, uh, the more I realize that um, as a bass player, I can actually do less. Hmm. So it's more about, I mean, you know, you get older, you figure these things out. It's more about what you don't play, you know, that kind of stuff. Right, right. Uh, you know. All right, cool. Well, I've uh, uh, kept you a little longer than I, I uh, uh, whatever you need. had, had build, but... Uh, um, and that, that takes care of, you know, really all of my questions. Was there anything we didn't talk about that you are curious to discuss? 
Well, I uh, I do want to point out that um, I I hope to within the next you know get some time within the next year. Um, I, I I plan on going down to darn it. I'm going down to Palma Valley with my little buddy Huey. And we're going to write some music. Okay. There's no reason we can't do that. Yeah. Huey's completely capable of recording, singing in the, in a studio. I mean, in that kind of an environment. Um, and you know, I just want to hopefully, you know, get something going maybe for 2023. I mean, I, uh, I miss my buddies, you know? Yeah. But, ah, that's, that's the only thing I could point, I, I, I could say, I mean, you realize it's been uh, four years now. Yeah. Since that faithful, you know, time. But um, I don't know, have you spoken with Huey recently? Uh, yeah, uh, I guess it was about two weeks ago. He's uh, better, I think. I mean, I don't know what he told you. He's he was in the midst of a good stretch, he said, but yeah. um, you know he he talked about his his uh, hesitancy, if only because there are times he thought, okay, I've reached this level, and then they call rehearsal, and then it goes to shit. Yeah, yeah, and he, yeah. Of course, I mean, he's concerned about that happening. You know, uh, you know, but, uh, you know. I mean, I know he wants to play. Darn it. Yeah. Uh, um, but he's got a tough thing. He's got a, a tough disease right now. So he's got to deal with that. And um, I'm just glad that he's feeling a little better. And, but I've got, I do, I've got like five or six things that, that I've been working on that I, I know Huey can help me with. 